We're learning the third Sikha and Chelik Tezayin on page 475. This year is being learned, Lila Nishmas Rab Yosef Ben Yamin Ben Rab Menashe Koltman. Nachtem vi de Teire detailed be Pratiyas vegna Komas HaMishkan. After the Teire concludes all the details of the Mishkan and how the Mishkan was put up, and the Nach vegna the Ashras HaShchina in Mishkan, and also about the fact that the Shechina came down to dwell in the Mishkan. As the Pasuk says, Vayachas HaOnon Esayel Mayit, Ukvayd Hashem Malias HaMishkan. The cloud, the holy cloud, came and covered the Almayid, and the glory of Hashem filled the Mishkan. When as the Ashra is given as they feel, and the Abish dwelled in the Mishkan, is to such an extent, as Vlayachal Mesha Love Elay Almayid, that Mesha Rabbeinu could not enter into the Almayid, Kishachin Olava Anon, Ukvayd Hashem, Malias and Mishkan, because of the glory of Hashem that was there that did not allow him to enter. The tale to Taita, so following this, the Taita says, Uvehe Olay Sa Anon Miala Mishkan. When the cloud would lift up from the Mishkan, Yisub b'nei Yisrael b'chol Maseyim. The Eden would travel in their journeys. They would know that it's a sign that they're moving from this location. V'im lo yala anon. But as long as the holy cloud that was there did not ascend, then v'lo Yisub ad yoyim he oloisay. They did not travel from there until the time when it uh, lift when it ascended from the Mishkan. That's the conclusion of the parsha here and the chumash of uh, of uh, vayik of. Uh, Shemais in the end of this week's parsha. Dafim fashtein. So the question here on these two psukim, when the Taita brings this inyan of the cloud and the traveling, is as follows: L'chayre geherin otti tzvei psukim dort vos retzich vegen dem seder amasoyis from Yidden in Midbar. These two psukim that speaks about what happened, what how did Yidden have the sign to know that they have to travel from this location? So it should be brought, and the Taita should say this over there, where it actually discusses. How they even travel, what how they knew to travel. And in fact, the Torah repeats this point there again, and it goes into a much greater length with more details about the Eden traveling there in Parshas Balayischa, where it's the subject that it's discussing the journeys of Eden in the Midbar. What's the connection of explaining the Eden's seder and traveling? As dafko veha olasayin and gaima yisu. When only when the cloud lifts up, then they know to travel. Vim lo yale v'lo yisu. When it does not lift, they know to stay put. Mitn teichel na parsha da. With the content of the parsha here, where we're not discussing the travelings of the Eden. Vasretzich gar vegen da shra sashchin and mishkan. Here the point that we're speaking about is that finally after the Eden erected the mishkan, there was zeicha that the shchin came down and dwelled in the mishkan. That's the theme we're speaking about. But we're not talking about the, the journeys of the Eden in the Midbar. The Sephorna is Mevaya. So the Sephorna explains the connection of these Psukim here. As does Gufa, that this itself was Ube Holay Sa Onon Miala Mishkan Yisu, that only when the cloud lifts up they know to travel, is a Bavais, a Hira, a Vifil, the Ashra, Sashchin is given, Bekviyas and Mishkan. This is coming to show you not to point out how the Eden had a sign to travel, but actually to point out the extent of the permanence of the Shechina that dwelled in the Mishkan. Bizen Anoifin, it's permanent, the Shechina is here in the Mishkan to the extent that the Shechina never was removed from there unless it was time for Yidin to move forward. Otherwise the Shechina was there constantly and permanently in the Mishkan. So the Sforna is basically saying, we're not bringing up these, this Indian of the Yidin having a sign to travel for the Taita to describe the Masois, the journeys of the Yidin. It's being brought here to continue pointing out the extent and the intensity and the permanence of the Shechina being present in the Mishkan. However, this explanation is not smooth here in the Pasek. Weil von Lashna Pasek is Kentik. From the language in the Pasek, it's noticeable as they come to Tzelem them say that Amasais, that the Pasek is coming to describe the order of how Yidin traveled. Ube Lashna Medrash, and the Medrash actually says it clearly here. Ze Sipur Hamasais. This is the story of the journeys of the Yidin. Is that Muvan Kanal? If so, the question comes back. Vasfar Hashaychis, Hot, Sipur Hamasais. What connection is there about the story about the Yidin traveling in the Midbar? Was Ben Kaimai Barucha is in Parshas Baaloischa, where the Torah is, 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 is separately describes this at length in Parshas Baaloischa. Mitn Sipur from Akamas Hamishkan Ashras Hashchinenim. 
With the story here in this week's parasha in Pekude, where it talks about how the Mishkan was erected and how the Shechina came to dwell in it. The Kashi is noch starker. This question becomes even stronger. According to the Medrash, Chazal tell us, as an Onoy from Sefer Vayikra, the beginning of the next Chumash, the next parasha in Vayikra, Vayikra al Moshe, is a Hemshech to them, Vashteit Da, Far Dem Posek, Uveholis Anagaymer. It's following the theme of what it speaks about over here in the Pasik before over here, Alis Anon, what does it say here? The Pasik tells us that Moshe Rabbeinu was not able to enter into the oil mayit. As Moshe Tnit Kikenta Rangen in oil mayit. And Biz, and, and the continuing on that theme, the Pasik in the beginning of the next Chumash says, Vayikra Moshe. The Tevisha calls out to Moshe. Was di kriyat oivgeton as a zolkenin arangin in oil mayit. And now, the Ebishter summoned him and calls him and empowers him to be able to enter into the Almighty. So Kumtais, so what does it come out from the, what Medrash says here? As in the Hemshe Chaksuvim Vla Yochum Maishe Gaime. Vayikral Maishe, there is a continuation of the story in the Psukimir. The Pasik says about the Shekhinah dwelling in the Mishkan, and Maishe can't enter. And then it continues that Vayikra, Hashem calls out to Maishe. But is the Taita Mafsik Mitazaitik in Indian? The Taita is interrupting. With a side subject, Sipur Amasoy, is the story about how Yidin traveled, was which has absolutely no, no connection to the theme of what we're speaking about, the Shechin and the Mishkan, and Moshe Rabbeinu entering into the Mishkan. So this makes the question even stronger. Why does the Torah do this? Why does it interrupt with a different subject which has no connection to what we're speaking about? Everything in Torah is precise. Is Vibalt, the Medr Zok, that's Vayikra al Moshe. So, since the Medr tells us that Vayikra, that Onayp from Seifa Vayikra, is a Hemshech to their Seif from Nunze Parsha, it's continuing from what it says at the end of this week's Parsha, Velo Yachom Moshe Gaimer, that Moshe couldn't enter. It's Fashtandik, as the Shaykhis is Oich in the Teichin from the Beide Parshis. There is a connection over here in the content of both of these Parshis from Velache, the Psukim Zenonatel of which these two psukim are part of. In other words, the connection is not only in these two psukim, but it's a connection of the, uh, of the theme of these two parashis. So what this means is as follows. Sefer Vayikra. Vasinyane is Sefer Karbanis. The next Sefer, the next Chumash of Vayikra, it, it speaks about all the Karbanis. Kumt Behemshech. So this is continuing the theme. Nit nart some sipur from binyan va'komas amishkan. Their mokim vume brank the karbanis. It's not only continuing the story of the fact that they built the mishkan, and therefore this is the place where the karbanis are brought. Nor oich to the pratim in the oifim from the ashras ashchina in mishkan. But also the karbanis is continuing specifically and precisely this detail of exactly the extent and how the shchina came to dwell in the mishkan. Was vert itself in their parsha, which the Torah tells us here in this parsha, or befrat as a kumpe seifa, specifically at the end of the parsha, where the Torah describes not only the fact that finally they had a mishkan and a place, a home for Hashem, a place where the shechina dwelled in it, but exactly the extent and the oifin of how the shechina dwells in the mishkan, the karbanis have a connection specifically to that. So now, if so, via shleima, we can say as das is echt der tam. This is also the explanation and the reason after the Pasek says that Moshe couldn't enter because of the intensity of the presence of the Shechina there is the Pasek Mafsik, the Pasek interrupts and the Tzel, wegen the Masois from the Yidin it talks about the journeys of the Yidin here which is connected to the fact that the cloud lifts up Siluk HaShechina from Mishkan which indicates that the Shechina is removing, the presence of the Shechina is removing from the Mishkan, which is seemingly an opposite point, that now the Shechina is away. Vail, because Toi Shechina Inyim for Karbanes, the concept of the Karbanes that are being brought in the Mishkan is verbunden, is connected, noch mehr wie mit der Shechina in Mishkan, even more than the connection that it has to the Shechina that was present in the Mishkan, dafke mit dem, was zu lieb dem Asais von Yidin, but specifically, it also has a connection to this that because you didn't have to travel, so the Yidin, it's required for the Yidin to have a time period where the Shechina is removed from the, from the Mishkan, from amongst them, and then the Yidin are traveling. So the Karbanis is just like we said before. 
that the Karbanis is connected not only to the general fact that they have now the Mishkan and the place where the Shechina is, but it's also connected to the specific Eifin, the extent and the intensity of the Shechina being present in the Mishkan. So also this detail about the fact that from time to time when you didn't have to travel, the Shechina is removed from the Mishkan is also related to the theme of the Karbanis. And that's why the Torah puts in this, these Psukim here in the flow of the story of the Shechina being in the Mishkan. Kidla Kaman Sivches. As we'll see, the explanation of the connection here in the in Sivches of the Sicha. The Rebbe will give a lengthy explanation and a lengthy introduction, and we'll get there, we'll see what the connection is. We'll understand this by first explaining the Shaykhis from Siyam Sefer Shmois to Zayn Aschala. The connection of the end of Sefer Shmois to the beginning of the Sefer. The rule is that the beginning and the end are always connected to one another. So the connection <coughs> sorry, between the beginning and the end of the Sefer is also the names of the first and last parsha of the Sefer shows on the subject of counting. Shmois, the first, the first parasha, which is Shmois, Virashi is Mefarish. Rashi explains that these are the names of the Yidin that had the Shvatim that came down to Mitzrayim, and the Torah counts them again. And Rashi says, Even though they were already counted once earlier in Parshas Vayigash, the Torah counts them again. To notify to us the love of Hashem to Yidin, that Yidin are compared to stars. So that's Shmois. So Shmois is connected to counting the names of the Shvatim again. Pekude, the minion from Mishkele, Nidvay Samishkan Chulu. This is taking count of all the donations of the materials and the gold and the silver and so on for the Mishkan. Kol Kelov Lacholavidase. And also the count of all the different vessels and all the different things that were brought in the Mishkan for the Aved and the Mishkan. Also counting. Now the Teichen from Sefer Shmois. Now in general, what's the Teichen of the entire Sefer of Shmois? Is This is the sefer that it speaks about, and is the the name of the entire sefer. The Rebbe brings in the, from the Ramban <coughs> in Aura thirteen. It's called Sefer Agola. This is the sefer of the redemption of Yidden from Mitzrayim. So after Fizel is coming, so if so, it should be as the Rinyan from Gula that this subject of redemption, the subject of this sefer, is farbundim with an Rinyan from Minyan. It has to be connected to what we see here in the opening, in the first parsha of this sefer, and the last, which is speaking about counting. Was binte ascholem mit n sefer, connecting the beginning and the end of this sefer of Shmois. Isn't it move on? But the question here is minyan un giula zen lochayre god in yonam hafchiim. The concept of of counting and the concept of redemption seem to be opposites. The mitzel zachen, when one counts anything, is das gufa bavais as the zachen zan mukbal. You're counting it, you're giving it a specific number. It has a beginning and an end. In dem schum from the minion, the number, the, the total sum of it. On their minion is das madgish. Even before counting it, it's the fact that it is, it has a certain lo- number that it's limited to, but when you actually go ahead and counting it and you're giving it that number, you're emphasizing the limitation of it. On the other hand, redemption and real redemption. Going out of Mitzrayim, going out of exile or any limitations whatsoever. That's the real concept of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Not just the fact that they physically left the land Mitzrayim, but you leave any limitations whatsoever. As the Rebbe brings in Aura 16 from Torah Eir, to leave all limitations of all the elements of all of Seder Ishtal Shalos. So how do we have these two opposites together? The theme of Sefer Giyula, of Sefer Shemais, is connected to counting. These two opposite points that we see coming together here. You find this in the beginning of the Sefer itself. In the beginning, the first parsha. The name of the Sefer was the name of the Sefer. The name of the first Sefer of the Chomish which is a hint that this is the content of the entire Sadr is Shmois. Was Batzitzich not so mugbul the minion from the Bnei Yisrael Aboy Mitzrayma, referring to the limited amount and limited number of the Shvatim that came down to Mitzrayim. 
And gleich the Nacht, but immediately afterwards, the tzel to pasik. The pasik tells us if ne Yisrael paru va Yishrutu va Yirbu va Yatsmu b'ma'id ma'id that the Yidden multiplied and were so many ma'id ma'id, like it's uh, impossible to count. Was vaist of a riboy was get a rois legamri from gather a ragel. This double term of ma'id ma'id indicates that this is such a riboy, so much Yidden multiplied to an extent that it's totally out of any norms, any standards whatsoever. So since this, that Yidin, go out of any limitations whatsoever and they're multiplying, is all a posik and part of the Pasha, that the name of the Pasha is Shmois, Kuntais, so then that, what that means is, as der paru even this detail of the unlimited growth of Klal Yisrael, is a tail from Teichem Minyan Minyan. It's part of the Parsha, where the content of the Parsha, as indicated by its name, is to count with a certain limitation. So where's, where's the connection here of these two opposites, unlimited and limited? Similarly, you find these two opposites in the end of the Sefer here in this week's Parsha of Pekude. Pekude mishkom vais kanal ef tselen, vagbole. Pekude means to count and to size up with a limitation. Vidiklia mishkom chulus and alts be mispoh bagbole. As it is with the Kliya Mishkan, that all have a certain number and a certain size, a certain limitation. But what's the end of the Pasha, as we had before? It says there, that Moshe can't enter because of the Shechina that's there. That there's an unlimited presence of Hashem and a limited human being. Even a person like Moshe Rabbeinu is not able to enter. The Ashra in Mishkan is given. The most chosen and the most special human being that ever existed, even he can't enter into the Mishkan because of the intensity of the infinite presence of the Shechina there. So here again, this, the name of the Parsha is Pekude. But part of this parsha, and in the conclusion of the parsha, it speaks about the unlimited presence of Hashem in the Mishkan. So we have many different questions here to explain both the connection of the end of Pekude to the beginning of Ayikra, with this theme of the journeys of the Yidin that comes in here that seems to be out of place, the connection of the beginning of Sefer Shemais to the end of Sefer Shemais, the connection of the two opposites in Parsha Shmais itself, and the connection of the two opposites in Parsha Pekudei itself. The Klal is the Gaz Barin, um, so generally speaking, the explanation here is as follows. Hagam as the Tachlis is, so although the purpose is, as Mezol Tzukum and Subligvul, that we should elevate and we should bring the world to a place that it goes, it gets redeemed of its limitations, and it comes to a place which is unlimited, Giyula, that's the real concept of redemption. Was is hecher from the medida akbala from welt above the limitations of this world? Is aber nit kavane, but the purpose though is not as durch dem blig vol zal veren oisk vol. The point is not to totally annul the existence of the limited world and to just elevate into a different reality that's blig vol and ignore the existence of the limited world that we're in. Nor rather, what's the purpose of creation? As davzain dem chibor from blig voling vol. We have to join together these two opposites, that the unlimited revelation of Hashem should be fused and joined into the existence of this physical limited world. That's the ultimate redemption. The ultimate redemption is to introduce the unlimited revelation of redemption into the physical limited world. This is also expressed regarding the Yidin that are counted. So the language the Pasuk uses is, And it'll be the number of the Yidin like the sand by the sea, which cannot be counted. So the Pasuk begins with the word Mispar. It doesn't say, It says, Which means, their Mispar, that the Yidin, that exist here in this physical world with the limited numbers will that zayin lo yimad v'lo yisafer. It will be revealed in them an unlimited revelation which is above any level of counting. So we see this regarding the existence of Yidin in the world. And as ayech v'neget so mishkan so similar is true regarding the mishkan as well. The ashra v'asas l'maylo memedida v'akbala. This dwelling of the shechene here that's a revelation of godliness that's above any limitation is given in the Klea Mishkan. It's coming down into this Mishkan, which is limited, the Kalim, which are limited, versus Beminyan and Bemidida Kanal. And the Pasek here counts them and gives a specific number of what everything is. 
So that's the general explanation of the connection of the two opposites that we see both in this week's parasha of Pekudeh, the specific size and number and amount of everything that exists in the Mishkan, and at the same time the unlimited presence of the Shechina that comes down into the Mishkan. And similar in Shmois, where it speaks about the fact that there's a limited number of Yidin that came down to Mitzrayim, the Shvatim, and at the same time it says that the Yidin became and grew unlimited, because the point is to bring the unlimited power and existence of who Yidin are into the limited being of, of, of their existence in this world. And in the Mishkan as well, to bring the, the Shechina that is so powerful that Lo Yochud, Moshe Rabbeinu, can't enter into where? Into the Mishkan and the Kliya Mishkan that are limited. What's the reason for this? Varom, since Vibal, as the Kavon al Yayna is. Nisava, Kodesh Baruch Uliyas Leidir Betachtayna. The desire of Hashem in creation was that there should be a dwelling for Himself here below in this physical world. So therefore to fulfill the purpose of creation, so there are two things that are required. Aleph, the first thing is, When the Medrash uses the expression loy, that this is a dwelling for him, for the Eibishter, it's referring to the very essence of Hashem Himself. So not any level of revelation, but the very essence of Hashem Himself. This is bringing Hashem Himself totally removed of any of the limitations of any of the levels of the worlds that is going to come and be present in this world. That's the purpose of creation. But at the same time, based the Dira Davzaim B'Tachtainim. Where is the dwelling of the essence of Hashem Himself going to be? In the lowest elements of existence in the world. In Olam Haza Agash Michulu, Shein Tachten Lamata Mimenu, in the language of the Alter Rebbe in Tanya, in the physical aspect of the world, and in, the, in this itself, in the very lowest aspect of the existence of the world, Bimida Ugvul Dafke, in a place which is measured and limited in this world. That's the purpose of the creation, to join these two opposites, to bring the very essence of Hashem to be in these, in, to have a, a dira, to, to dwell here below in this physical world. So, these two points, Aleph, the dira la'atz musi is barach, the fact that this is a place where the very essence of Hashem can dwell. And Beis, as the dira lo is barach, is betachtainen. And that the location, the place where the Shechina comes to dwell is betachtainen in the lowest place in this world. Dereken zechais, bechlolos, so generally speaking, the fulfillment of these two points, which bring together the kavana of Hashem in creation, is, is fulfilled in the Yidin and in the world in general. What's the reason for this? Where, where do the, uh, these two, uh, the, the Yidin and the world play a role over here in the fulfillment of these two points of the Dira for the essence of Hashem and that the Dira should be betachtainim in the lowest elements of existence in the world. The real place, the ultimate and real place where Hashem is revealed and dwelling there is Dafke Lader Velishka in Benisham Yisrael. Hashem dwells and lives within and is revealed within the Nishamis of Yidin. It's the Yidin that become that place that Hashem could live in them. This is an expression that uh, is taken here from Hemshech Samachvar from the Rebbe Rashab. So Dafken Yidin, the actual fulfillment of a Dira, a home for Hashem, where the essence, the very essence of Hashem can be there and reveal there that this is His place. Where is this? Only in Yidin. Why? It's the Yidin that are one with Hashem. Zanadach Yidin, the Emes Adir, Faratz Musi is Barach. So it's only the Yidin which are one with Hashem that are a true dwelling for the very essence of Hashem. Zei Zanak Kaviyachal, Ein Zach, Metatzmus. Yidin, what, are, what is a Yid? What is the Nisham of a Yid? The existence, the entity of the Nisham of a Yid is a, is a piece of godliness, is a Chelek Elekam Imal Mamish, and therefore it's one with Hashem. So in the Nishamas of Yidin, that's the place where the Shechina could be revealed and fully unified and really dwell there. So this is the real dwelling of the essence of Hashem. However, this, this degree of dwelling and really being there, and this is His place, this is the, the place for Atmos. So regarding the Dira in the world, in the world itself, that this, this, the Ebishter is not unified here in the world in this way. 
is below is da. So if you hear the dira, what is the dira for the Ebishter below in this world, which the Medrash says, the dira betachtainim, is below is das, was as verter heret in welt, as ihr ganze mitzies is nor mitzad atzmos. So the dira of the Hashem in this world consists of the fact that the world will sense that it has no existence of its own whatsoever. It, its entire existence is just atmos, the essence of Hashem, comes from, that is, comes from the essence of Hashem, on mi bal adoy en shumitzis klal klal. And therefore, when the essence of Hashem is revealed, so then anything other than Hashem himself is non existent whatsoever. Einoid mulvadai. The ultimate Einoid mulvadai is not when any level of revelation is revealed, because any level of revelation, to one degree or another, allows room for some other entity to exist. When the very essence of Hashem is revealed, and there is the ultimate Einoid Mulvadai, so nothing other than He exists. So therefore the dwelling, the, the Dire Betachtainim, expresses the fact that the world does not exist. It's all the essence of Hashem. So this is very different. This is sort of actually the opposite of the Dire that occurs within the Shamas Yisrael. The Dire in the Shamas Yisrael is that Hashem dwells in them because the Yid is one with Hashem. He is one with Atzmus. Not what he's not, what he is. Mashenken, on the other hand, though, the dira in the world consists of the fact that the world is not a Mitzis, that it's all about Hashem. You can't say about the world that the world and Hashem is kulachad, is one. No, the, the revelation of the very essence of Hashem reveals the truth that the Velt is completely bottled with Mitzis. It negates the existence of the world. So therefore the dira for the very essence of Hashem that he should be revealed and dwell and be unified in the place that he is, is dafkin the mitzis of a yid. But nor the dira vert oiv geton bitachtainim dafke, the dwelling that Hashem dwells within a yid, where in yidin does Hashem dwell? Where is the essence of Hashem revealed in a yid? Dafke, the yidin that are here and serving Hashem bitachtainim in this lower world. In the Ravid of Yidin in Elam Hazar, Tachten, when Yidin serve Hashem over here in this world below, Tzamachin, from the Dvarim Gashmi, Makedi Lelakus, when Yidin take the physical objects of the world and transform it into a vessel for godliness. So Dafke here is where the Shechine is able to dwell within a Yid. It's here when Yidin are able to do this kind of Aveda, to take something which is physical and seems to be totally not associated with any holiness whatsoever. And to transform that and to create this tremendous Chiddush, to bring godliness into, even into a Gashmias, even into the physical. So this, how can Yidin do this? How can Yidin make such a kind of transformation? It's only because of their power that they have that the essence of Hashem is within them. So it's this Aveda of the Yidin, that's Bittachtainim, that reveals this dwelling and this essence of Hashem that dwells in them. So this reveals the Shairish of the Nesham of Ayid, which is one with the very essence of Hashem. So that's the Dira B'Tachtainim. The Dira Lo Yizbarach is ultimately within Ayid. How do you achieve this Dira Lo Yizbarach within Ayid? B'Tachtainim. By making a Dira B'Tachtainim, by taking the physical of the world and elevating it and transforming it into holiness. That's how the Eibishter has revealed the Shairish of who Yidin are that are doing this is revealed. To put it in different words, when does this revealed? And when is this accomplished that you can clearly see that the Yidin, who are Yidin, what is their true entity, that they are a Dira for Hashem, meaning that the essence of a Yid is one with the essence of Hashem, as his enemy Yuchad Metatzmusi Yizbarach Betachlis, that a Yid is totally one with the very essence of Hashem. On Shumak Balaviikov, and that there's no limitation to this relationship, and there's nothing that can ever come in between, there's nothing can, that, that can stop this relationship, is as Dafke, when Oich in the Migdid, Oich the Mididivak Balaf, on the Tachtainim, is Nit Kenmenir. That's only when Yidin come down here below in this world. And you would think that once a Neshama comes into this world, he's in a foreign environment and he has all kinds of challenges. And here, his connection to Hashem may be weakened or maybe even be severed. And nevertheless, even here, he is able to continue his commitment and his connection to Hashem and nothing will stop. Nothing comes in between a Yid and Hashem. 
So this, this powerful essence of a Yid that's always connected and there's no limitations to this connected is not revealed when the Neshama is above and it naturally is inclined and it's doing what Hashem wants because it's in a holy place. It's so to speak near Hashem and it, therefore it feels the presence of Hashem. Dafke when the Neshama comes here below. And over here, there are all kinds of Akbalis and Miniyas. And nevertheless, the Neshama ignores all of that and it continues to be connected. And Arad Rabbe, actually going even further, the Tachtainim Alein, Veren Durich the Yidin, Amokim Mukhsher, Faradir Leis Barach. Yidin can take the physical world and even prepare it and elevate it that it should become a place that you can bring the dwelling of Hashem into the world to recognize the Einoid Mulvadek. So not only are the Eden ignoring and pushing aside the Metzius of the world, not to allow it to come and disturb their, their unlimited connection to Hashem, but actually to elevate the world itself. That's an even deeper power, a more unlimited power that Eden reveal regarding what they are, what, how deep their connection is to Hashem. So it's dafke, through this that it reveals the very deepest connection of the essence of Hashem with the essence of a Yid. And that's the real Dira. The real Dira is not in the expression of the Enoid Mulvadeh in the world, but the real Dira is in the dwelling of Hashem within a Yid, that the Yidin and Hashem are one essence. Okay, so this is um, a very uh, new, fresh look at the concept of Dira B'Tachtainim. That it's the Pnimius, the Rebbe here refers to it as the Pnimius Inyan, the deeper dimension of the real Dira that's ultimately fulfilled within Yidin. The Mid, Vepen Fashtein, so this explains why the opening, the first parasha in Sefer Shmois, is the dominion from Bnei Yisrael. It's about the Yidden that came down to Mitzrayim that are counted. And Seifoi, the conclusion of Sefer Shmois, is the dominion of Mishkan. It's about counting the Kalim of the Mishkan. Also counting, but counting the Kalim of the Mishkan. In Sefer Bereishis, Retzach wegen the Bria Alein. Say so, to go step back, Starting from the beginning of the Torah, Sefer Bereishis speaks about creation. That's uh, the Rebbe brings in order 32, the Lashon of the Medrash, Shabbai Nesasek Kadosh Baruch Hu Vara Seilamai. The Rebbe is creating his world. Vizi is given Eder, on in ear is amplakt gevaren ir kavana. Speaking about the existence of the world before the purpose of the world, the gilu of what the world is about, was revealed in it, which is Bishvul Atayre Bishvul Yisrael. It's all for the purpose of Torah. The Rebbe created the world for Torah and for Yidden. But the Bishvila Tayyar Bishvil Yisrael is, is revealed later in Sefer Shmais, where it talks about the first mitzvah of Achedesh Zelachem, then the redemption of Mitzrayim and Matan Tayyar. Sefer Bereshis speaks about the creation itself, for the most part. You have a heart of 33, you can take a look. In Sefer Shmais, Ratzach Shein Aber Vegn Yisrael. In Sefer Shmais, over here, it begins speaking about Yidin. When the birth of Klal Yisrael happens, as the Pesukim Yecheskel described, that when Yidin were redeemed from Mitzrayim, this was actually also the birth of Klal Yisrael. And he begins speaking about the Ebesha giving Yidin the Teireh. And through Yidin and Teireh, this fulfills the purpose of creation. And in them, regarding fulfilling Dosfos, Yidin, Firin, Durich, Kavana, Sabriya, the fact that Yidin in the world fulfill the purpose of creation is Faran Atchila Vesayf. There's the beginning of the Sefer Shemais and there's the end of Sefer Shemais. The Tchila, which is the Iker Upnimius, the beginning, which is the inner dimension, the deeper layer of the purpose of creation, from the Kavana is of the purpose <coughs> of Hashem creating the world. <coughs> Sorry, Bnei Yisrael, this is an miyuchad, mitatzmusi is barach. Sorry. So these are the Yidden that are connected to the very essence of Hashem. Was das is der Inyan von Minyan Bnei Yisrael in Parshas Shemais. So this is the opening of the Sefer that speaks about the Yidden that are being counted here in Sefer Shemais. Loidia chibasam. And this is to, to uh, let us know the special love that Hashem has for the Yidin. And the far is their minion, durch them Eibishen allein, der Eibishte tzeltze in, tzeltze on in Teire. Hashem counts the Yidin, and where does He count them? He counts them in Teire. So the opening, the opening of Sefer Shemais that's going to speak about the purpose of creation, which is the Dira B'Tachtainim. What's the Pneumius of the Dira B'Tachtainim? A place where the very essence of Hashem could dwell within the very essence of a Yid. 
So therefore the opening of the Sefer speaks about that deep connection, that Chiba, that essential connection that every Yid has with Hashem. The Sefer, the conclusion of the Sefer of Shema is, das heißt, wie hat die Kavane wer durchgeführt bepeil? How do you actually fulfill this purpose of revealing the essential connection, the deepest connection of the very essence of Hashem with the Yid? Is durch machen am Mishkan lo yisbarach von dvarim gashmi. It's by creating a mishkan for of physical materials and bringing the shechine into the tachtainim and the lowest elements of the world. It's this, it's this kind of aveda of not only not allowing the world to disturb the connection to Hashem. And therefore, this reveals the unlimited of conne connection of Yidin to Hashem, but even more so, revealing the actual dwelling of the Shechina within the Tachtainim Gufa. This reveals the true unlimited essence of who a Yid is. The deed of a Tachtainim could only happen through the Kayach of the essence of Hashem that you didn't have, and therefore they can bring the Shechina down to such a low place and even transform and elevate the Gashmias itself to become a deed for Hashem. So therefore this is the Saifai, this is the actual fulfillment of the deed of Tachtainim that happens within a Yid through their Aveda that they do here below in this world. Evolved as the Shadish from the Shamis Yisrael. Now, since the Shadish of where the Shamis of Yidden come from, we say Zen and Ein Zachmet that's Musi is Barach. The Yidden come from the very essence of Hashem Himself. Komtarais begiloi dafke in the Aveda be Tachtainim. So, this is revealed specifically in the Aveda that they do here in the lowest elements in the world. In an art from Helen the Hester, and specifically in a place and in a time period where there's concealment. Is the full move on? So from this we understand as das vierte chayz beikher that this is actually specifically and primarily accomplished. Noch mehr wie durch der Avede von Bayin der Mishkan an Art von Gilead Kos even more than in the building of the Mishkan, which ultimately was a place of revelation of godliness, and therefore this is not the ultimate place of Tachtainim. It's not the real place where there's a a hell and a a concealment of godliness. It's through the Aveda that you didn't do with the lowest elements in the world. That on its own is not at all a vessel, a, a place that's a receptacle for the godliness that would be revealed in it. In general, what this refers to is in the Aveda in Zmana Golos, when Elokos is not made by Gilead Velt, the time period of Golos, when you don't have the revelation of godliness in the world, this fulfills this purpose of Dirabit Tachtainim. In other words, what the Rebbe is saying is that ironically, the fulfillment of the purpose of building the Mishkan itself is, is actually fulfilled even more so when we don't have a Mishkan, when we don't have a Beis HaMikdash, and we're in a hell of a Hester, and we're in Golos, that Davkevir, the existence and the Matzav of the world, is even more of a Tachta, and it's an even lower situation than when you have the Mishkan or the Beis HaMikdash, where there's godly revelation there, and that Davkevir is the ultimate fulfillment of the Dirib Tachtain, which was the purpose of what the Mishkan was about. Thus is the Yazbare, so this explains and answers the first question that we asked there was by Msiyum Hasipur, Veng Melechas Mishkan, by the conclusion of the story about the Mishkan being built on Ashra Sashkin in Mishkan, and that the Shkhin coming to dwell in the Mishkan, Vert et Selten Pasik Veg Msipa Masois. The Tayra continues to talk about the journeys of the Eden traveling. Which is connected to the fact that the Shkhin removes and elevates from the Mishkan. Because the Tachlis von Mishkan. The purpose of the Mishkan to machen from Tachtainim Adirale is Barach to turn the lowest elements of the world into a dwelling for Hashem. Firtzach Eis Beikke Durch Dem. So this is primarily fulfilled through this. Was their Mishkan Gita Kayach that the building of the Mishkan empowers Yidden as a Zayzal Zayin Oich Bechom Asay that the Yidden should continue and bring the revelation of Hashem with them even in their journeys in a place where they don't have this level of revelation. And these journeys here refers actually to the Eden traveling in the time of Golos. Vid al is mevayir. As al explains this, as the Masois in Midbar, that when the Eden travel in the Midbar, then a meram is oich of their bidu from Midbar Amim b'meshach zman Golos. It's also a hint for the time period that Eden travel in the desert amongst all the nations of the world, away from their homeland, away from the Beis Hamikdash in the time of Golos. So that's what the pasuk here is referring to when it says b'chol masayim. 
was darten is shchinte begalusa. In that then in that time period and in that place, the shchine is exiled. Nidar der gilu fin shchine. You do not have a revelation of shchine, like the pasuk here is saying over he olis on and goyim esilak shchine. The shchine is removed from amongst the yidden when they travel. Zene yidden mevarer o mahapech dem helam ha'olam as ech darten zol meir zayne lekos. And here is the ultimate fulfillment of the avoda of yidden of dira betachtainim. That even in such a place and in such a time period, Yidin could refine and elevate the world, that godliness should shine even there. So that's why this Pasik of the journeys of the Yidin is sort of the ultimate fulfillment of the story of the building of the Mishkan. Because the fulfillment of the purpose of building the Mishkan is fulfilled even more so by empowering the Eden to bring that revelation and, and to continue it even in a place and a time period which is outside of the Mishkan. Now, to bring the connection to Sefer Vayikra. That in Yenam now. So this theme that we're speaking about, as their Tachlis, from the Mishkan, Fir Tzachais Be'ikke, Durach der Aveide and the Chutz von Mishkan, that the purpose of the Mishkan itself is fulfilled through the Aveide that the Yidin do later in a time period which is outside of the Mishkan. Direct Tzachais in them in Yenam Mishkan Gufe. This is actually expressed in the Aveide that you see that was done in the Mishkan itself. And then was the Ikra Aveda from Mishkan is the Aveda Sakrabanis. In the fact that what was the main Aveda of the Mishkan all about? It was the Aveda of the Karbanis in the Mishkan. There was a lot of different things that happened in the Mishkan. But it's the Karbanis which is the main purpose and the focus of the building of the Mishkan, as the Rabbi here brings from the Rambam, that says that the point of building the Mishkan or the Beis Hamikdash is to be Makr of the Karbanis. Why is that the main focus of the Mishkan? The Echilok, Tzavishindem Etzama Mishkan, on Aveda Sakrabanis. The difference between the very building of the Mishkan itself and then the Aveda of bringing the animals and sacrificing them on the Mizbeach and the Mishkan is. By Binyanam Mishkan, by building the Mishkan is the Tachlis. So what's the purpose here? Nita zoi in Mailazain di Dvarim Gashmiyam from Velachamot Gemach, the Mishkan. So to some extent, it's not so much focused on the fact that we're going to refine and elevate these physical materials with, with, with which the Mishkan was made, built of. It's just primarily about designating a certain location, a certain place in this world. Where there will be the dwelling of the Shekhinah, where Hashem will ascend from above. Hashem from above will come down into this world. When Hashem comes down from His initiative, from above, into this location, into this place, which was designated for Him to come down, so then it overwhelms. It doesn't come and refine and elevate the specific elements of the Mishkan itself. It's a revelation of above that is mevatl. It, it overwhelms the area and the place and there's a new reality and a new level of holiness that's introduced into this place. But it doesn't specifically refine and elevate everything that from below that it, the, the materials of the Mishkan were built of. By contrast, what's the point of the Aved of Karbonis? Is in Yana the purpose and the point here is to take that physical animal which you could have just taken and slaughtered and eaten for, you, eaten for yourself for, for your own purpose, for what you need. And instead you come, you bring it into the Mishkan and you elevate it as a carbon for Hashem. So here the person below is taking specifically an animal that he owns and he's elevating it, he's mailam avarit to the Eibishter. So that's the whole theme of the Karbanis, even more than the building of the Mishkan itself. To elevate and to reach the physical to be connected, to ele be elevated in Kedusha. On the far, so therefore, chach as the avedes are kabbonis. So although the avedes of kabbonis, the amshachas are kedusha yedeze, and the holiness that you bring into the physical through this is a achane of tzukumin so hecher. This is a preparation to come even higher to the ashra versus in mishkan in arayin. That through this, through the avedes that was done in the mishkan, you draw draw down that is a greater level of godliness in the mishkan and specifically in the arayin where there was the most intense revelation. The revelation that there was in the Arayin is even more than the revelation that there is in the Karbanis. Vastafar is their Aleph from Vayikra and Aleph Zira. This is one of the hints and the fact that the Aleph of the word Vayikra and the Teire is written with a small Aleph. Vastafar of Tzimtzum. This refers to the fact that Aleph refers to Hashem. But it refers to the fact that the revelation that we're speaking about here in this Parsha is a Tzimtzum. It's not such a great and intense revelation like you have in the Arayin. 
by an Avedis Akrabanis, because the Aved of Karbanis, what does the Teichen from Sefer Vayikra, which is the content of this Sefer of Vayikra, Sefer Karbanis, is that Eira Kedusha was Vert Nimshach, the revelation of godliness that's drawn down through Karbanis. Vayikra is Malashim Kriya Vamshacha, the word Vayikra itself also means to call and to draw down. Aklanerer vide Etzema Ashra was in Mishkan. It's a lower level of revelation that there is in the Mishkan itself, and most definitely less than the intensity of the presence of the Shechina that there is in the Oren. But from this again, but at the same time though, and on the other hand, This fulfills the, a deeper purpose of what the Mishkan is about. To turn the physical lowest elements of Gashmias itself into a receptacle of a revelation of godliness by elevating the physical animal to become part of Kedusha. So just like we're saying, Benigeh to the time period where they didn't have the Mishkan. And then there's the time period of Ubehei Oloi Sa'anon. That is, when you don't have, there's a Hel and Vahester, you don't have the revelation of the Shechina. And the ultimate purpose of the Mishkan is to empower the Yidin to bring the Shechina B'tachtainim even then when they don't have the Mishkan. So within the time period of the Mishkan itself, you can also divide it. There's the ultimate and real full intensity of the presence of the Mishkan, of the Shechina in the Mishkan, which is in the Arayim. And then there Gufe, there is a place where there's less, where to some extent there's a Helen Vahester, there's less revelation. It's a small aleph, it's the karbanis. You're dealing with physical, you're elevating the physical animal. But nevertheless, even though you may think that this is less important and less significant and less powerful, dafki here, this is the ultimate reason and purpose of why the Mishkan was built for the karbanis. On the myth is fashtandik, it's with now, nah, based on this, we understand the continuation and the theme of the psukim here. The question at the beginning of the Sikha was that it says, Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't enter. And the Medrash tells us, Moshe, that's why Hashem calls out to Moshe. And the Pasuk interrupts in between to speak about the journeys of the Yidin. How does that come in here? And what's the connection to Vayikra al Moshe, which speaks about Karbanis? So in the Mitzvah Fashtandik, so now we understand, Vayikra al Moshe, Un Sefer a Karbanis Bechlal. Vayikra al Moshe, and Bechlal, this is the opening of the whole Sefer of Karbanis, is a Hemshech Oich. This is also a continuation, Tzu Uvehei Ole Sa'onan Goimer, to this that it says that the uh, the, uh, onon, the presence of Hashem elevated and the Eden were traveling. Canal Siv Beis, as we said before, that this is specifically connected to this. Violin Beide, because both speaking about the journeys of Eden traveling in a time period where you don't have the revelation of the Mishkan. And the Karbanis, where you don't have the same intensity of the revelation as you have it in the Mishkan in general and in the Oren. Is Mudgish the Zelbenakud? You have emphasized the same point. As the Mechoven von Mishkan, Firzech Oich Ois, that the purpose of the building of the Mishkan is also fulfilled, and not only also, but for Adarab, on the contrary, Nochmer, it's actually fulfilled even more so, Durch der Aveide, Bemakaim, Vusis Nita, the Ashras, Ashkinesh, Be Mishkan. It's fulfilled in a place, whether the Karbanis, which is that place in the, um, in the Mishkan, outside by the Mizbech HaChitzin, where the Karbanis are brought, and it's a place where you don't have the same intensity of the Shechina in the Mishkan itself, or in a time period in Golis, when you don't have that revelation of the Shechina, that's the ultimate purpose of the Mishkan, to empower Yidin, to make the Diribi Tachtainim, even in such a time period. So that's the connection here. Ahagam as der Aveide Bishaz der so in this kind of Aveda, in this time period when Yidna are traveling, felt in Gilea Shechina, they are lacking in the revelation of the Shechina that existed in the time of the Beis HaMikdosh. This reveals the essence of who a Yid is, that there's no limitations, there's nothing that will stop his connection to Hashem, and that creates the real Dira of Hashem within the Neshamas of Yidna. And this is the Pirish Apnimi, and now this is the deeper understanding in that when the cloud, when the holy cloud elevates, then the Yidin will travel. Externally, there seems to be that the Shechina is removed from Yidin. But what's really happening? 
As durch der Avaide, net men hacher. The point is that it's through this Avaide that you actually even reach higher from the Onan Amishkan. You connect to a level, you connect to the essence of Hashem that's higher than this level of revelation that's expressed through the cloud that's on the Mishkan. When is this Mamshech in the Mishkan by Achanoya Shala Achre Zeh Maseyem Bemokem Ashayach Nusham? And you bring this higher and greater level of revelation, the connection to the essence of Hashem through their journey, traveling in a place where you don't have revelation to bring the Eibishter to be present in the place that they're, gonna, that they're going to rest in the new location. So this is the real meaning over here that in Bechitzainius it's the revelation of the Shekhinah that's removed. But Pnimius this reveals the special connection that the very essence of the Eden have to Hashem. This is the lesson for every single one of us in our Aveda. Not paying attention to the very darkness, the very strong darkness that there is in Golos. A person knows regarding himself, his own personal condition that he's in, that Golos Prati, that he is struggling with. At the same time, a person must know when a Yid fulfills his shlichus in the world in all of the journeys, in all of the ups and downs and places that a person has to go to, in Vosfara Masa, Zon Narzain, whatever journey it may be. Is Oib Nor, Zain Masa, is Fabunim with Onan Hashem. If he's just following where the cloud is taking him, Dafku Vehe Ole Sa Onan Vim Loyale Velo Yisu. That he follows when the cloud ascends and is moving, so he follows the lead of where Hashem is taking him to. Erveis, which means, as Meavaya Mitzade Geva Kenonu. He knows that every place in life where he ends up in, which means not only physically where a person is, but all the conditions and the ups and downs that Hashem takes a person through. Umetum Viar Gate, wherever he goes, in the Vasfara Matzav Azolzach Nitkefinen, in whatever situation he's found in, is the Fabundin Mit Ashlichis von Eibishten Lasses Le Isbarach Dirbitachtainim. It's all in connection with his shlichus in this world to create a dwelling for Hashem over here in this world. Obemele is ein masse in Golos, like Nerotz Nelian. The fact that he's in a place of darkness and in a place of concealment is all the purpose and the Ratzen of Hashem for his being and what he has to do in this world. So then, by having this awareness and, and, and Adarab, they're allowing this to even deepen your connection to Hashem. That by him, that the cloud ascends, Lamal Yusa. This is not the removal and the concealment of the Shechina, but on the contrary, it's in the positive, and that then the Yid becomes connected to Hashem, surpassing all the levels of revelation that there is represented in this cloud. Chach. As Eich der Gilui von dem Onan is Hechef von Yechayles from Chinas Meisher Abeno all of Ashalom was his Dab Nafshay. Even though already this cloud itself is so powerful that it's even more powerful than the level of Meisher that exists within every single year that you can't even enter there, Kanal. And but nevertheless, a Yidden connects even higher than this. On is das Mamshech ba Chanoye Shala Acharov, and you bring it down to the ultimate place where Yidden are going to come to 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 dwell and to be in with peace, which is when Mashiach comes. Biz as Yisrael v'kodesh b'richo kol achad in the place where there'll be the ultimate revelation of the union between Hashem and the Yidden that are all one.